my feeling about any art discipline is that it is the quest. Oh, wow. Dinosaurs! Stephanie is really a question. She's convincing in her pain, but she hasn't been able to translate it into what she does, you know. A time of hot, moist, long-winded homogeneity. What do you think of Wendy? These are issues, you know, that are so burning in this country, that are so important, that with the right kind of push in the right direction and the right kind of understanding of how to put it out, could be really interesting and hot subject matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only one shore forever. Well. Okay, we have to take Robert. I think Robert has distinct possibilities. And I think he has no concept of what he's going into. I am the Tyrannosaurus in your brain stem. Dig below the cranial plates, and I am there. You are part angel, part dinosaur! They're all just very nice and I really like them, but I have to look and see what I can do in 10 weeks, you know, and I have to go by smell, you know. <clears throat> That's the end of my cat's and he said, weakness, geez, we still have five to go. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Rachel Rosenthal, called by Life Magazine the leading West Coast performance art practitioner by the Village Voice, the grand dam of performance art, described by the New York Times as with commanding stage presence, divides her time between creating her own performance art and teaching others. This is the story of one of her workshops. Welcome! Bravo! Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, as they say in French, we have so much to do, <laughs> and we're in such a hurry that we have to go real slow. You know what I mean? Real slow getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> The interesting thing about the way all this started is that it started as a, a rebellion against the commercialism of the art uh, community. And uh, artists decided to create works that could not be sold, bought and sold. In the old days, all these pieces were hit and run. It was like one time only things. And I, this is how we, we got away with, you know, with appropriating yeah. music and never paying for yeah, it and everything. Yeah, it was like one does one time only. I'm sorry? When the first time you cut your hair, wasn't that one of those one time only? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except that I did it twice. Uh, I had to do that piece twice because I did it in Santa Barbara the first time, then I did it downtown L.A. And um, the second time was, I assure you, not at all as exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I had been doing very theatrical performances right from the start because I had been doing theater. I, I came from the dual background of visual arts and theater. So I brought skills to my work right from the start, which incidentally were usually looked upon by my uh, colleagues with great disdain. Ah, here are the flashlights and batteries. 
I uh, P Y and stash. that uh, requires people to do something with an audience is called the phonics. And what do you call your pieces? Well, I don't know what to call them. I, I have a real problem with that because on the one hand, they're very performance art-like because they're very personal. And um, there was a whole, particularly among the, the women and the feminists, there was a whole genre that dealt with autobiography. And all of my pieces up to 81 were completely autobiographical. myself because it's not really performance art anymore, um, interdisciplinary uh, performing, I, I don't know, you know, if somebody coins a good name, I, I'd love to have it. In performance, the artist is really in control. And that's, I think, why I love that form. And that's why I want to see, I want to see you really go into yourselves and finding a voice for at least one strong statement. I really want you to zero in on something which could not be said by anyone else but you. And then from there, everything sort of comes out and, and develops from that including the form. Okay, so, what does that mean? <laughs> Scary plot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, safe art is an oxymoron. It just doesn't exist. There's no such thing as safe art, you see. I think that all art is scary. But the, the scariness is always in, in the fact that if really you do it right, then the piece will really go in areas where you've never been before. And it's the great unknown. And it's the great unknown for you, and it's the great unknown for the, for the public. So. In India, I am called the Black. In Scandinavia, hell, queen of shades. I am the nightmare, the Black mayor headed Demeter. Demeter Kerponic, the subterranean. You try to blot me out! You cannot kill death! Sooner or later, all of you, my earth children, come to me. You are mine. Feel your energy planting itself deep into the planet, reaching for the energy of our mother, the planet. A human being is almost like a hyphen between heaven and earth and exists through the 
actually the, the goodwill, if you please, of Earth and the cosmos. And the planet is bringing up into your being all her energy and all her power. Feel how that power is available to you and how you can bring it up into yourself. There's a chance that you will never feel lost, you'll never feel powerless, you'll never feel alone because you are always void and you are always sustained by this environment which is the, the gorgeous planet we live on and the, the wonders of the world in which we were born. I was born in Paris and my parents were Russian Jews and um, my father was 20 years older than my mother. He had come when he was 14 to Paris, so it was before the turn of the century. And my mother came as a result of the Russian Revolution. So they met in Paris, and um, my father, who came penniless, had made a huge fortune by then. So I was then born and raised, you know, in a very, uh, very affluent household of assimilated Jews in France who were very Parisian and very sophisticated and, uh, and very uh, playful. They loved having fun. They loved playing. This is really a narrow telling you to go there. And then when you go green, try not to have organs, fingers, ears. Just be a blob of protoplasm. That's all you are. And little by little, you begin to evolve. You know, at the beginning of the blog, you kind of sat up and kind of looked around and I thought, oh shit, you know, he's going to be old human Beto again. And then it really took over. It really did. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I believe um, in training people the way I believe in training animals. And I am not saying that because I think it's insulting to people, because in my view, um, Animals are certainly equal, equally important, as, if not more than some people. So I believe that when you train animals or when you train any uh, discipline, you accentuate the positive. You tell them what's good and how wonderful they are when they do such and such. And then they're able to bounce off that onto the next one and then from there onto the next one. My feeling about art discipline is that it is the quest. It's a different kind of quest for each person, but it is a quest. An art discipline is like the fairy tale quest because it is so difficult, because you encounter all these dragons and all these doubts and all these difficulties, and you have to really discipline yourself to do things that you sometimes don't feel like doing, you don't want to do, but you have to do it, you know. And then there comes a time when the boon becomes palpable because your discipline has suddenly flowered into a state where you feel, I can do it, I've got something, I have something to say. And then you bring it back to the world. And so, in a way, I see this workshop a little bit like that. 
where we're going to go through this quest, we're going to encounter all these dragons, we're going to find that boon, which will be that piece that we're going to do as a collective, and then we'll bring it to the world. And so we're off and running. <laughs> It's cold, but the, the sun, sun is shining, shining bright. bright. You can, can feel, feel the wind, wind on your face. face. A hawk, hawk flies, flies up above. Everybody knows what they're doing. They're like really, and I'm the only guy going, you know, like going, everybody's like going. For, for decades, I had a real problem because I could never admit to being wrong, right? And I learned from my cousin who lives in Paris, Nicole. She would do the worst, I mean the worst boo-boos. And instead of doing what I would do, which would be try desperately to cover up and to regain my dignity, <laughs> she would, on the contrary, she would start laughing at herself and so I learned from that, you know, there will be those moments when suddenly it's cut, you know, the, the uh, current is cut. Why is it cut? Because you hopped out of your skin looking in and saying, hmm, you're not as good as that one. It's this continual ability that we have to hop out of our own skins, which I don't think animals can do. And I think that that's why they're so blessed. I personally have been on my quest, you know, for decades, and I have gone through amazing changes, just huge, huge changes in my own personal life, in my way of being, in my way of looking at the world, in my way of uh, communicating with others, and so on. Tremendous changes. The eyes of the artist always open for the first time. That's what's called originality. If you can train yourself to see things for the first time, to see relationships in a different way, and suddenly the whole world opens up as a completely strange place. It's kind of like what you always read those Zen master things, I always say, you know, because the most important thing has to do with you. And so, you know, often we're starved for direction. She just keeps, if I ever ask her about something, she seems to move for me. <laughs> I can do anything that I see fit. Ain't nothing you some Mexicans can do about it. Cause I'm a white man. Uh, with the white man blue. This continent for 500 years, and I'm still having to deal with all of you minority fools. Oh, Robert didn't want to be insulted. Well, well, yeah, but that's the whole point of the of the the song, you know. It because it doesn't make you guys look bad. It makes him look like a real shit, you know. If you let back out of this, then Chambers has to back out of playing your Ku Klux Klan man. You know, because it's exactly the same thing. I mean, he can feel, oh, I can't do that because that's not me, you know, and, and I feel and oppressed. She, she offered me that option to back out of that. Uh huh, I understand. But, you know, what we're doing here is we're actors, you know, and we're, pre we're presenting ideas 
to an audience. That's what we're doing. We're not becoming these things. I want to shave my head the way they shave. The collaborationist women, the ones who fucked the Germans. Art is not about doing good. Art is about being absolutely truthful and being as sophisticated in the form itself as you can make it. Sometimes you, you look at a bird and you say, well, why beak? You know, why hitchhiker? You know, why rolling like this on the floor? Well, you know, it's right for the bird to have these things, and it's right for this piece to have these, these things, and it makes sense somehow on a very strange level. Now, I personally like that. How the same exact ass. Shiny and patently pieces. It costs a million bucks. You are a liar. You are such, you're a biggest liar. Liar, 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 you're the biggest liar. You're full of shit! There is always a tendency when words come in to get very naturalistic and to do actor studio. You know, Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler. Forget it. This is not what the performance is about. But that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. So that it's really like a sound piece, but using words, OK? And also the movement. Terrific. My, my challenge, really, is to have these people do the best that they can do, you know? And to, I want them to shine. Yeah, make it clear. Make it clear and, uh, and make it definite what you're saying with that. What, what? I didn't hear, I didn't hear. But what you are doing for us, you are being uh, what they used to say about women in the past, the eternal feminine, you know. The eternal feminine was usually this beautiful blah woman who never said a word, and the men would project all their feelings and all kinds of, you know, fantasies on her and make her whatever they wanted, you know, virgin, whore, whatever. And, uh, and this is what happens with this kind of work, you see, where you are so, so intense on what you're doing that it seems to be filled with meaning. And I've just realized why I think you're so beautiful. It just came to me as I was looking at you. I can't believe that I haven't seen it before. You know what she is? This one. Uh -huh. This one. These are all Piero da Francesca angels. This Christine. One. Christine is a Piero da Francesca angel. I would give. I'd give, I don't know what, to look like a Piero da Francesca. <laughs> I think he's the best painter that ever lived. That's my Piero. Now, aside from the, you know, the anecdotal meaning, what do you see in terms of dynamics? How little you require to be wowed in theater. The way I work on my pieces is I take strands, very different strands, and sometimes they are on collision courses, and they don't seem to belong together at all. But to me, metaphor is very important, and metaphor is about collision of disparate things that don't belong together. And the spark that is created from collision is the spark of art. I think it's an art form that just knows no boundaries and uh, 
the sky's the limit. It's very freeing and very challenging because you can do anything. You know, I did the performance with uh, seven cars. I did a performance with 40 animals. Our democracy, like every other human society, is erected on the fascist oppression of other sentient beings because they are other and we have might. There is no justification for this abuse, but there is a reason. And the reason is, they are other and we are stronger. And we want to exploit their bodies and their minds. But if might makes right, then we have done away with morality altogether. And as a species, we are morally bankrupt. If you need to play a persona or a character, it's a very good idea to get two adjectives that, that are necessary, that you work with, and put them together like that. And even though it's very extreme, it's very caricatural, it acts like the kernel of the character. Sometimes you get two adjectives and you think, that can never work. How can I play those two things together? And you have to remember that all of us are made up of such contradictions and that all of us are, you know, double images which are outrageous, really. I am lover on wheels in Gaia! I am filled with love, filled with violence! It's a little bit like the, the motion of a spacecraft, you know, where you don't really have a motor running, but you want to move the spacecraft in another direction, and you just have a little bit of, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, what do you call them? The, no, the, uh, the little jet engines just fart a little bit, and because it's in a vacuum, it immediately goes off, you see. And that's a little bit what I'm doing with them. I'm giving them these little pushes like that, and whew, off they go. See, all my life, I had relied on Jesus, you know, to talk to God for me, and I didn't even know how to talk to God anymore. And every time I tried to talk to God, I couldn't because all my thoughts were totally fucked up by Jesus and the Bible. I want you all to notice that in spite of your terrible fears and tremblings, all of the stuff that you do is valid if you do it from the heart and the gut, you know? So that's something I really, really want you to understand and not to shy away from anything which is real for you. You know, I came out here and, and to be a television actor, you know, to be on sitcoms and to be in the movies and, and then to work with a person like Rachel who is all about being primal and not about being surface and trying to sell my little Campbell soup. It, it's such a bizarre experience. I hate this world. I hate the way things are. I hate the chain of life. What creatures do to creatures? What people do to animals? What people do to people? When I was 13, we, um, we had to flee for our lives when the Nazis invaded. And we first went to Brazil where we stayed, well, we were three months in Portugal and 10 months in Brazil. And then we came to New York after that. And uh, I went to high school in New York. And after the war, I commuted between Paris and New York for about eight years. I just couldn't 
decide, you know, where to stay because I wanted to be French and I wanted to be American and it was another case of schizophrenia. I um, was very interested in theater by then because my, my um, schooling had been both visual arts and theater. And then in 55, my father died here in Beverly Hills. He was just here for the vacation, for the summer vacation, and he died. And my mother wanted to move to Beverly Hills, and I um, decided I should get a job. And so I got a job at the Pasadena Playhouse teaching there and uh, decided to leave New York and uh, came here in 55 and remained. Uh -huh. because my nose is stuffed up. <laughs> I very often catch myself being a very, very strong misanthrope. A misanthrope, a person who hates humanity. And at the same time, I say to myself, how can I be a misanthrope, you know, when, for instance, I have a class like this, and I very, very sincerely, I love I mean, I love each and every one of the people in this class. But at the same time, I'm a misanthrope. I say there's a lot of Indian ghosts just roaming the countryside. So we're not being you know, physically assaulted by these people, but uh, what, what has happened to them is affecting us. And I believe that very strongly, I think that you know, all this craziness that goes on, the, the anxiety, the madness, the violence, all of this, something that is brought on by uh, bad blood. I went through so many decades of hating myself and no, no confidence in myself and so on and so forth. And over, over the years and over um, the years of doing my work and putting it out in spite of my fears and, and anxieties and, and self-doubts, I've come to finally um, a point where I'm able to accept myself knowing what my faults are, knowing what my um, lacks are. I'm still able to, to be comfortable with myself. If you have a lot of um, self-hate, then you project that self-hate and you are continually looking out for others who can hurt you. You're looking to be better than others. You're competing. You're, um, you resent other people's successes. You know, all of this comes from self-hate. So if you stop hating yourself, all of this sort of goes by the wayside. At first I thought, oh great, you know, I'm coming in touch with my creativity and I get to be on stage, I get to perform and all this great stuff, you know, but, but I think really what this is all about is, is I'm having a chance to learn more about myself and um, being involved with other people who are, I think, are going through the same process whether they know about it or not. Rachel wants us to kind of mix disciplines, you know? So I got a chance to actually play the drum. You know, being the drum, I was the one that kept the rhythm and kept the thing going. But I was doing a really awful job, a terrible job. And then for about 10 seconds, I got it. I became like one with this drum. I knew exactly why Colette plays the drum. I was really, I was jammed for 10 seconds. For those 10 seconds, I understood what it was like to be a musician, which I'm not. And, uh, and Colette, after we was finished, Colette said, hey, you got it. And I said, yeah, but only 10 seconds. She goes, but I know which 10 seconds those were. I'm trying to line them up in, in a way that will hopefully eventually in their lives come to some kind of epiphany. Because otherwise, why live, you know? <laughs> She 
is this is what you're saying and this is what you're feeling, right? And it's like, yes, that's exactly it. You're right, you know. And she says, well, then say it, feel it, you know. Well, okay. <laughs> then you'll be sorry you ignored me. Then you'll be sorry you treated me like shit. Of course, I could say that to them if they were here. They both died of alcohol-related diseases. The self, you know, with a capital S, the self comes forth and becomes revealed. And in their performance, in in our performances, whether it's me or Wendy or Stephanie or whoever, you know, been crying for hours. No. Since yesterday, no. Since birth. I'm trying to feel for the world in a way. I think that's what it comes out of. Very often we are strangers to our own self. And so when we do this kind of work, which is very revealing, the self sometimes becomes more apparent to an audience than it is even to ourselves. Because we are busy uh, living it, and we don't get that feedback effect, that mirror effect. I am a gay man in a woman's body. You've got two ways of playing it. Either you're going to talk about a realization and tell the story doing, of which right? is what you've been doing, or you're going to realize it right there in front of us. Okay, so she said, close your eyes and listen to that small, still voice inside of you. So I closed my eyes, but I didn't hear anything. But she says, now wait a minute, didn't you hear a voice that said, I don't hear anything? I said, sure, I've heard that voice. And she said, that's God. You gotta listen to that. I think we're very complicated and very complex. And I think also we play games with ourselves. I think that we're in denial in a lot of ways. So I don't think that it's that easy to learn about yourself. Where is the little girl? Because that's you. And just say, very simply, out there. Can I, can I work on this by myself? Sure. Oh, yeah, I'd rather do that. Better than anyone, I know what this means, because I have the same thing, although from a completely different place, you know. So I know the pain, and I know how difficult it is. I think it's very courageous that you're doing this piece. And I really take my hat off to you. I've never dealt with this stuff in a real direct way. I've always looked at it through the music, or looked at it through different angles, sort of uh, coming in from this way or this way, but never head on. He sexually molested me. He was old enough to be my grandfather. We have aspects which are really dark and which are real shadow and which um, we just don't want to admit are there. And those are the, those are the interesting parts. But a lot of people never want to deal with that, never want to see that or acknowledge that they're there. L'amour, c'est pour les paresseux. Par contre, détester, nourrir rancune, chercher noise, cultiver un adversaire, un ennemi, alors là, on en est à l'action, à l'acte à l'énergie dynamique à but précis. L'amour, c'est flasque, féminin, amorphe. La haine, c'est vigoureux, masculin, linéaire. I can get you with the clip, don't you? Cause I know times you fly, don't bother me. Don't even try to be starting jack shit. Cause if I flip, you can get quick. It's not like that. You get girl like a bicep. Flies get swatted, but won't be forgotten. That's just me. I'll say, you like the love that's selling your shoes. My mom is sort of like a tech, and if you check it, you're going to find it.
I can hit you with a clip, don't trip, cause I have no time. If you try to follow me, don't even try to be. Start jack shit, cause if I flip, you can hit it quick. It's not like that. You girl, like the mindset. Fly against the spot. Look on me, oh god, that's just me. That's just me. Pops it out. If I'm saying bang, that's just me. You can go out after dark, that's just me. What I'm seeing is really interesting because it's a result that comes very much from them with, I think, very little input from me, you know, uh, relatively speaking, <laughs> much less input than I usually give, you know. And I think that it's interesting to see what happens. They're learning from each other. They're learning from their willingness to, to extend themselves. Uh, a lot of them are extending themselves way beyond what they're used to doing. In French, there's a wonderful expression, liché. It means licked. You know what I mean? It's like you're licking everything smooth. And the beauty in nature, the beauty in the cosmos, is not always pretty. It's not always harmonious and beautiful. It's sometimes very gritty. If you can marry that part of yourself with the part that is beautiful and perfect and harmonious and princely, then you will be a much, much more complete human being because every part of you will be integrated and will be there available for us to see and for us to be nourished by. I don't understand what Rachel is, but I have the utmost respect for her. And uh, even though we come from two different worlds, I had to start expressing myself and say, this is what I'm going through in the workshop. This is what I I want to learn, yet I can't reach. I can't, uh, I can't touch what she has touched as a performer. Would you all be willing, and this, hopefully you will all be willing, but I see the butt song ending with all 12 of you lined up and then turning around, mooning the audience, <laughs> and blackout. All right. Well, I don't know. What do you think? How do you, how do you, how do you feel about it? It's only going to be your ass. And it'll happen so fast they won't even notice. Like how fast? <laughs> Two seconds? Well, not even. You know, you turn around, take your pants down, and black out. So anybody here have any objections to mooning the audience? What? No, thank you. It's fine? OK. All right, great. So let's end it like that. All right. Alan Watts being uh, British used to love to spank, because they all love spanking, the British guys. So I sort of said, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Takes two to tango. I'm not into that at all. <laughs> it's not just because of my big old butt. <laughs> no, but it's getting bigger all the time. <laughs> Tummy's twisted because he ain't been listening about the shit I've been missing. You know that good ass shit? You call it the girly girl? Some call it the cookie. The nut, the chick. Yo, I gotta get some of it. it makes me feel so good before I go to sleep. It's like a little uh uh, a cookie sheet. And that's what they got mad about because we were talking about the talking vagina about as far as, you know, cookies, cookies, as nuts. You know, we were talking about that and they got really upset. Sweetness, covered girl. Well, it's no, no, start with Larissa wanting to, because uh, she didn't want to pull her pants down to the butt. Pants down, but no one wanted to pull their pants down with her. So Larissa started because she didn't want to pull her pants down. We're not mooning or anything, but we are all coming on stage to end the butt song together. I think that the, the beauty and the interesting thing about this workshop and about the piece that we're working on is that we are negotiating in this workshop, the way we negotiate in real life. In a sense, an audience will be privileged to be participating in the process that we've had here. That's how I feel about it anyway.
So pass this around. Exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> Why am I nervous? Well, because things don't really seem to be coming together like I imagine. Everyone is, it, we're still kind of scattered and I don't know. It's, it's, um, the blocking's not down, the, they keep changing the blocking and everyone is getting upset, you know, and the, those that are. A few people that are choreographing want to do, you know, one way. Rachel wants to do another, and I don't know. It's just shit. When you're working under such stress, um, you know, things begin to happen and flare up, and <laughs> you just wait it out, you know. If you're gonna shit on anyone, do it on Pablo. Tempers really fly because of a lot of tension and a lot of uh, stress. We've got very little time to do a lot of work. I'm going to ask you to keep your energy up until midnight, and then you can drop it wherever you want to drop it. But for now, I want it here, OK? And then at the very end, you know, somehow, there's a change of lights, a quick change of lights, and the tango starts, and everybody starts tangoing off with their chairs. <laughs> yeah. I want to offer myself as a piece of as a piece of life whether it's bad or good or sad or happy to be taken into by other people and shared and i think if i can do that through music and performance art i think i can have a really good life i'm scared but i know i have to do the show not just for Rachel, but for myself. I think the ultimate test is today. Whatever happens in these public performances is icing on the cake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cake. Just think of this, guys. Think of the flow of the whole. Don't get stuck on your own performance on your own thing. Be centered, be within yourself, know who you are and what you're doing, but give your love and devotion to the whole piece. And let it flow, and more than anything else, have fun.